Okay, so my talk is on APN and uh, AB power functions. So APN and AB functions, uh, they are cryptographic functions uh, with uh, optimal resistance to linear and differential cryptanalysis, which are two main cryptographic attacks on uh, block ciphers. And I will concentrate a little bit more on the case of power functions because they are uh, several big open problems which are uh, open for uh, a couple of decades and for the objects like APN and AB functions which are known only for 30 years being open for 20 years is uh, a big thing. So I would like to encourage people to work uh, on these problems, especially young ones, because uh, I think in these topics actually imagination is more important than knowledge. And um, yeah, I wanted to uh, introduce uh, my uh, group, but uh, Alex did a great job of doing it for me. But anyway, uh, this is, uh, uh, so I'm from Selmer Center in Secure Communication, a professor and the head of Selmer Center. And we have uh, a research team in Boolean functions, which is here. And this picture is taken in one of the um, annual international uh, workshops on Boolean functions and their applications. And uh, speaking of which, I would like to uh, invite you to participate and to submit papers to uh, this uh, year workshop, which will be in uh, during September 3-8 uh, and uh, in a picturesque location not far away from Bergen. And uh, the submission deadline is in the middle of April. I would also like to um, draw your attention to a Boolean functions encyclopedia, which we support, uh, where we um, yeah, give information on different topics on uh, Boolean functions. We provide codes to encourage people to use them as well, and uh, some other information. So, please use it, and also we would like to ask you to contribute to with this uh, page with uh, new topics, and uh, also codes which uh, you would consider be useful for uh, Boolean functions community. And the last announcement is uh, about uh, the George Bull International Prize. So we ask you for uh, nominations uh, for people uh, which uh, made um, big contribution to Boolean functions theory. And uh, I, now I will continue with uh, my talk. So I will, so my talk is organized in the following way. I will start with a short introduction. Then I will fix some basic uh, notions and introduce notations uh, for uh, uh, cryptographic functions, in particular for APN and AB functions. Then we will talk about uh, different equivalence relations which uh, preserve the main cryptographic properties, in particular APN and AB properties. And then we will discuss different constructions uh, of uh, APN and AB functions and properties of these functions. And uh, in the end, we will concentrate more on the case of uh, power functions and discuss uh, big open problems. So for N and M, uh, positive integers, Boolean functions are functions from n-dimensional vector space over the field with uh, two elements, uh, F2 into F2, that is it takes vectors of length n of zeros and ones and maps it into zero or one. And vectorial Boolean functions or NN functions are functions from n-dimensional vector space over F2 into m-dimensional vector space over F2. So Boolean functions were introduced in the end of the 19th century by English mathematician George Bull for the needs of fundamental mathematics and mathematical logic. But from the mid of the 20th century, uh, Boolean functions techniques became essential for many applications. And uh, the functions which uh, we will be talking about now are of interest for algebra, coding theory, combinatorics, sequence design, and cryptography. And speaking of cryptography, functions uh, used um, in block ciphers, um, uh, they are called, so Victorial Boolean functions used in block ciphers, they are called S-boxes, and they must possess certain properties to resist uh, different cryptographic attacks. 
And almost for each cryptographic attack on um, uh, block ciphers, there is a particular property of uh, function which measures the resistance to this attack. So for the two most powerful attacks, uh, the, most, the two most powerful cryptographic attacks on blo block ciphers, linear and differential attacks, the corresponding properties are nonlinearity and differential uniformity respectively. For algebraic attack, the corresponding property is existence of low degree multivariate equations involving input and output of the function. High order differential attack depends on algebraic degree. Interpolation attack depends on univariate polynomial degree and so on. The list can be continued. And so what we uh, say when we say that uh, the function is uh, optimal cryptographic function, it means that it's a vectorial Boolean function optimal uh, with respect to primary cryptographic criteria, that is uh, uh, resistance to linear and differential uh, attacks, that is with optimal differential uniformity and nonlinearity, and APN and AB functions are among them. And what is really nice about these objects, uh, and what I really loved about them, that they are seem to be universal. That is, they define optimal objects not only in cryptography, but in many other domains of uh, um, mathematics and information theory. And uh, we believe that this, the list of these uh, domains can be continued uh, in the future. So we always find some new uh, applications. And why it's really nice, because we can use the techniques and tools developed in all these theories to solve problems for cryptographic functions. And uh, vice versa, when we solve problems for cryptographic functions, we can be lucky to solve some big uh, open problem in all the in some of these domains, uh, and uh, but there is also negative side, of course, uh, that these uh, functions are hard to get. There are just a few known cases constructions of these functions. In particular, for AB functions, there are 12. For APN functions, there are 19. And we, if we restrict to power functions, then there are only four AB cases and only six APN. And they are also hard to predict, that, as we will see that they are, almost all conjectures are disproven uh, on these uh, objects. And now we will fix uh, notations and give some basic uh, necessary notions. So, um, Boolean and Victorial Boolean functions have a lot of different representations and depending on the application, one or another is used. So in cryptography, three most uh, used representations are algebraic normal form, uh, truth, truth table representation and so-called univariate representation and we will use only univariate representation in uh, this presentation. So if we have a function from n-dimensional vector space over F2 into m-dimensional vector space over F2, and m is a divisor of n, then we can identify the vector space with a finite field with 2 to n elements. And then the function f admits a unique univariate representation as a polynomial of degree 2 to n minus 1 with one variable and with coefficients in uh, f2 to n. And uh, important characteristic of uh, this function is its algebraic degree, which is defined as a maximum two weight or binary weight of exponents i, such that the corresponding co uh, coefficient ci is different from zero. <coughs> okay, and then uh, in univariate representation, linear functions have uh, this form that is, so these are functions where the uh, variable x uh, has only uh, exponents of uh, the type of which are powers of two. And then a fine function will be a sum of linear function with constant. Quadratic functions are, so affine functions are functions of algebraic degree of at most one. Quadratic functions are functions of algebraic degree at most two and they have univariate representation of this form. That is, uh, the powers of x can have binary weight at most two. And then when we say power function or monomial, we mean functions of 
in, uh, whose univariate representation has the form x to the power d, where d is uh, some positive integer. And the permutations are one-to-one -one mapping, and uh, for permutations we can define the inverses, which we denote by f to the power minus one, which are functions you, you um, compose from left or right by f, with f, and you get the identity function. And uh, then we fix notations for trace. Uh, so the trace function from f2 to n to f2 to m is denoted by this, trn m of x, and absolute trace by trn of x. And then if we have a nn function f and non-zero element v in f2 to n, then uh, the trace, the absolute trace of the product v times f of x, we call uh, it uh, a component function of f. So differential cryptanalysis was um, discovered in 1991 by Biham and Shamir. And in 1993, Nieberg identified the property of function which measures the resistance to differential attacks. She called it differential uniformity. So if we have a function f from f2 to n to itself, it's called differentially de delta uniform if uh, the equation f of x plus a plus f of x equal b has at most delta solutions for any non-zero a and any element b. And uh, the smaller is the differential uniformity, the better is the resistance to differential attack. And in that sense, differentially two uniform functions are optimal because uh, we are working in a binary field and if x0 is a solution of this equation, then x0 plus a would be a solution too. So um, the optimal case of differentially two uniform functions is called almost perfect nonlinear or shortly APM. And the simplest examples of uh, APM functions were also given by Nyberg in her work from 1993. These are power functions. So the first one we have uh, Gold function with exponent 2 to i plus 1 over f2 to n uh, with i and n relatively prime. So if we take i equal 1, then we get x cubed, which is APN for any n. And the second example is so-called inverse function, which is also a power function with exponent 2 to n minus 2 over f2 to n with n odd. So currently, Almost all constructions which we know uh, for APN functions are either equivalent to quadratic functions or to power functions. And there is a natural reason for that. Uh, and one of the reasons that studying the proper APN property for these kind of functions is a bit easier. So if for general case, we need to consider this equation for any non-zero A and any B, for the case of power function, we can restrict ourselves to a equal to one. And in the case of quadratic function, instead of considering all these, f of x plus a plus f of x equal b, we can restrict to the case b equal to f of a. And um, linear cryptanalysis was discovered by Matsui in 1993 and one year later, uh, Chabot and Woodney uh, identified the property of function which uh, measures the resistance to linear attack and they called it nonlinearity. So if we denote by dfg the distance between two Boolean functions f and, and g, that is the, the number of uh, points x such that the values of these two functions differ, then the nonlinearity of uh, um, vectorial function f is denoted by n sub f and it is defined as the minimum distance between all component functions of f and all affine Boolean functions. So nonlinearity can be uh, characterized by a Walsh transform of the function and actually not only nonlinearity but many other cryptographic properties are characterized by Walsh transform. We will see that even APN property as well is uh, characterized by that. So what is Walsh transform? So it's, um, uh, it's uh, defined by this uh, formula at uh, a pair of elements u and v, where v is different from zero. 
And then uh, these values are called Welsh coefficients of f. And uh, the set of all Welsh coefficients of a function is called Welsh spectrum of the function. And the set of absolute values of all Welsh coefficients of f are called, is called the extended Welsh spectrum. And uh, APN property is characterized with this formula that is a function is APN if and only if the sum of the fourth powers of uh, uh, Welsh coefficients is equal to this number. And the nonlinearity is uh, um, characterized by Welsh transform with this uh, equality. It's equal to 2 to n minus 1 minus uh, half of the maximum of absolute values of uh, Welsh coefficients. And it's known that it's upper bounded by 2 to n minus 1 minus 2 to n minus 1 over 2. So the higher is the nonlinearity, the better is the resistance to linear attack. So in this sense, functions achieving for which nonlinearity achieves this bound are optimal, and they are called almost bent, shortly AB. So um, AB functions uh, can have the Welsh spectrum uh, with only three uh, values, 0 plus minus 2 to n plus 1 over 2. And then, the, and then this shows, since uh, the Welsh coefficients can take only integer values, that um, AB functions can exist only for n odd. And uh, when n is even, then uh, functions with nonlinearity equal to 2 to n minus 1 minus 2 to n divided by 2 are known. And that it's conjectured that this is the best possible. And such functions are called maximally nonlinear. So it turned out that every function which is optimal against linear cryptanalysis is also optimal against differential cryptanalysis. That is, every AB function is also APN. The converse is not true in general. However, if we restrict to n odd and f quadratic APN, then f is necessarily also almost bent. So there's a nice uh, upper bound on algebraic degrees of almost bent functions. It's n plus over 2, and this bound is reachable. So the first examples of AB functions are also uh, power functions. So we have Gold function, but here we restrict to n odd. When n is even, the function is APN, but it's not AB. But even when we consider an odd case, there exist APN functions which are not AB. For example, the inverse function. And again, in a case of uh, AB functions, uh, power functions are a bit easier to study because instead of considering Welsh coefficients for any non-zero B and any A, it's enough to consider them for A uh, being in zero or uh, one. And in case of power permutations, we can fix B equal to one and go through all A's. So there are several equivalence relations which preserve uh, differential uniformity and nonlinearity, and in particular APN and AB properties. And why these equivalences are important, I can name at least two uh, big uh, reasons. So one is that equivalence relations are extremely good, uh, efficient construction methods. So if you have only one optimal uh, function, cryptographic function, you apply uh, equivalence, you can generate a huge amount of functions with the same optimal cryptographic properties, but there can be other properties which are not invariant under these equivalences and they can differ for this variety. And uh, the second reason that equivalence relation um, divide or partition the set of all functions into classes into subsets, and then instead of studying invariant properties for all functions, it's sufficient to study this property for only one function in each class. For example, when we have um, the field with 14 elements, the number of possible functions is more than 10 to the power 9, so it's an incredibly big amount. But the number of classes can be something like 5,000, less than 5,000, so something what is manageable to do. 
So two functions f and f prime are called extended affine equivalent, shortly EA equivalent. If for some affine permutations A1 and A2 and some affine function A, f prime is equal to the composition of A1, f and A2 plus uh, A. And in case when A is equal to zero, then uh, these functions are called affine equivalent. So affine equivalence is a particular case uh, of EA equivalence. And then functions f and f prime are called EAI equivalent if f prime is obtained from f by a sequence of applications of EA equivalence and inverses of permutations. So clearly EA equivalence is a particular case of this equivalence and also when we have a, a permutation, taking inverse of this permutation will be a particular case of it. And for the case of uh, power functions, we define a, a special equivalence, which we call cyclotomic equivalence. So functions x to the power d and x to the power d prime over f2 to n are called cyclotomic equivalent if d prime can be uh, written as a product of 2 to i times d modulo 2 to n minus 1 for some i in the interval from uh, 0 to n minus 1. And in case when x to the power d is a permutation, then d prime also can be uh, the product of 2 to i with the exponent um, for the inverse of uh, the function x to the d modulo 2 to n minus 1. So uh, cyclotomic equivalence is a particular case of EAI equivalence. And uh, so differential uniformity and nonlinearity are preserved by EAI equivalence and in particular APN and AB properties are preserved. So they are invariant. Algebraic degree is uh, invariant for EA equivalence but not for EAI equivalence because if you have a permutation you take its inverse and then in general they are not, uh, they don't have the same algebraic degree. Permutation property is preserved by uh, cyclotomic and affine equivalence, but not by EA or EAI uh, equivalences. And this is a list of all exponents d up to um, cyclotomic equivalence such that the power function x to d over f2 to n is uh, almost bent. So we have only four cases, and you can see that uh, these cases are studied long before APN and AB functions were defined. The thing is that uh, APN, APN and AB functions ha uh, defined some optimal codes in coding theory, and in case of AB power functions also define optimal sequences, so they, these uh, functions were studied in the context of coding theory and sequence design. And so in the first uh, uh, two cases we have Gold Kasami, which are defined with uh, different uh, parameters of i, and for different parameters of i we get different uh, functions. And what uh, you need to pay attention that uh, this uh, description of these uh, exponents do not really depend on n, and we have the restriction that n is odd. And two more cases, Welsh and Nico exponents uh, for n odd and description does depend on uh, the extension n. And uh, as you can see, the last two cases, Welsh and Niho case, were uh, long open uh, conjectures, which were proven only in the context of uh, Boolean functions, and the proofs uh, were based on the proof of APN function by uh, Dobertin. So this was really a breakthrough for them. And uh, this is the list of all exponents d up to cyclotomic equivalence that uh, the power function x to d is APN over f2 to n. So we again have golden Kasami function, but here we don't have restriction that n must be odd. And then we have uh, Welsh and Nico function, which we saw before, and two new, new cases, inverse function defined for n odd. And for n even, this is uh, differentially four uniform, maximally nonlinear permutation. And that's why it was used as a S-box in AES with n equal to eight. And uh, the last case is a Dobertin function defined for n divisible by five. 
It was proven by Dobertin that uh, all power APN functions are permutations when n is odd and 3 to 1 when n is even. And Dobertin conjectured that this list of APN functions is uh, complete, that is, there are no other. Uh, and this conjecture is open for 23, 24 years already. So I started, started my work on APN uh, and AB functions in the beginning of 2000, in 2003 more exactly, and at that time what was known about constructions of uh, APN uh, functions, that uh, all known APN functions were power functions up to EA equivalents, and that, as I mentioned, power APN functions are permutations for n odd and 3 to 1 for n even. And two big uh, problems on construction were existence of APN polynomials EA inequivalent to power functions and existence of APN permutations over F2 to N for N even. So for both cases, it was strongly believed that uh, these functions don't exist. And uh, actually both, and the first uh, problem was my, uh, the problem for my PhD thesis. And uh, it turned out that uh, both of these uh, problems were solved positively, and for the second case, at least for some n, due to some new equivalence relation. So, and actually this equivalence relation was not really new. That is, it was introduced in 1998 by Karle Shachpen and Zinoviev, but it was mistakenly identified like being another description of EAI equivalence. And uh, in 2005, with Alex and uh, Claude, we proved that uh, this equivalence is much more general than EAI equivalence. And uh, using that, we uh, constructed uh, the first uh, infinite families of uh, APN and AB polynomials, EA in equivalent to power functions, and this proved uh, a conjecture on non-existence of AB functions, EA in equivalent to permutations and also the conjecture on APN permutations for n odd was um, disproved for uh, n equal to 6. So what is uh, this equivalence? If we denote by g sub f the set of all pairs of input and output of the function, then two functions f and f prime are called CCZ equivalent if the image of the graph of f is the graph of the function f prime for some affine permutation L, and then uh, CCZ equivalence preserves differential uniformity, nonlinearity, extended wealth spectrum, and therefore also preserves APN and uh, AB properties. So currently, it's the most general known equivalence relation preserving uh, nonlinearity, differential uniformity. And uh, there was uh, quite a few works done to find uh, new equivalence relations. And uh, we did uh, quite a few work with uh, Claude. Unfortunately, in most of the cases, uh, the equivalences we considered came back to CCZ equivalence, or uh, they, we fi uh, finished up with uh, some construction methods which still to be studied to be reduced into or transformed into uh, equivalence relations. So currently, it's the most general one when it relates to APN and AB functions and uh, vectorial Boolean functions in general. So let's see how uh, these uh, problems I mentioned were solved. So we, take, uh, we took Gold uh, power APN function, applied CCZ equivalence, and constructed EAI in equi uh, power, uh, polynomials EAI in equivalent to power functions. So we constructed the first infinite families of APN and AB maps, EAI in equivalent to monomials. So they are presented in this table. Uh, for n odd, they are almost bent. And the first one uh, was uh, actually the one a, the, uh, when n is odd a b function, which is uh, ea in equivalent to any permutation. And so this disproved the conjecture. And then the question can be are there actually a b functions which are CCZ in equivalent to permutation? And uh, the, the answer is positive. And actually, most of the a b functions are not. Uh, CCZ equivalent to any permutation. So it was a big um, uh, wrong view on, on, the, on, on these functions. 
And uh, the problem of APN permutations, it was known that quadratic APN functions cannot be permutations when n is even. So it was proven <laughs> by Nyberg in 1993. However, if you apply CCZ equivalence to quadratic function, then potentially you can get uh, APN permutation. And that's what was done by Dylan uh, from National Security Agency of US together with his team in 2009. He applied CCZ equivalence to this function over the field with the two to six elements and obtained this uh, non-quadratic uh, APN permutation. So up to now, there's no more known examples of uh, such functions. So constructing APN permutations for n even with uh, greater or equal to eight is a big open problem. So now I will speak about the relations between different types of equivalences and why it's important because uh, actually uh, this is that equivalence is very difficult to work. So it's very, if you have two functions, it's usually very hard to, to say whether they are equivalent or not. With EA equivalence, we have a nice uh, invariant of algebraic degree, for instance, or some other. So it's always uh, nicer to see how equivalence relation for special functions behave. So very important result was by Dempwolf from 2018. He proved that two power functions are, um, so how, okay. Two power functions are CCZ equivalent if and only if they are cyclotonic equivalent. So instead of checking CCZ equivalence, which is very hard, we check very simple cyclotonic equivalence, which is can be done in a few minutes for each function. And uh, when it uh, comes, so we all, all, all already saw that for quadratic power APN function, CCZ equivalence is more general than EEI equivalence. But when it comes to non-quadratic power APN functions, then it, we conjecture that CCZ and EAI equivalences are the same. And it's confirmed for n up to nine. And recently it was uh, completely confirmed for the case of inverse function. And even moreover, it was proven that CCZ equivalence for inverse function is the same as a fine equivalence. So it's, the, the most simple case we can get. And uh, studying CCZ, a relation between CCZ and EEI equivalences in, in fact can be reduced to studying the problem of uh, existence of permutations of uh, the, this form. So for the case of power functions is L prime of X to the power D plus L of X. Uh, for linear functions L and L prime. And if we take L prime being a uh, identity function, then we, get, we see that uh, the, this problem of equivalences relates to problems of APN permutations, because then we can see we have the power function x to d, if it's APN, we add a linear function L, and then the question is whether it will be a permutation or not. So for Kasami, Welsh, Nihua, and Dobertin function, for most of the function, the problem is open. And if you solve this problem, problem positively for n even, you solve the big APN problem because then you construct APN permutation for n even. So this is uh, an open problem for many years, practically since uh, the APN functions were defined. And re relation between equivalences for um, non-quadratic case is um, uh, that uh, it's uh, more general CCZ equivalence is more general than EAI equivalence. Um, so we knew already that there exist uh, APN and AB polynomials, EAI and equivalent to power functions. And then the question was whether there exist APN and AB polynomials, CCZ and equivalent to power functions. The first example was found by Alex and his co-author in 2005 for, it was a sporadic example for the field with two to 10 elements, this uh, binomial, and the first infinite families of APN and AB uh, functions we constructed with uh, Claude and uh, Gregor Leander. It's also uh, binomials defined for all n divisible by three and four. And when n is odd, then these <coughs> functions are AB permutations. And so these functions provided the first examples of AB functions which are 
not quadratic AB functions, which are not equivalent to Gold functions, and disproved the conjecture about, about it. And currently we have uh, more than 10 infinite families of uh, APN polynomials, CCZ in equivalent to power functions. When n is odd, these functions are also almost bent. When n is even, they have optimal nonlinearity. And in general, these families are pairwise CCZ in equivalent, so you can think that um, we can be happy about uh, the number of uh, families, but in reality they classify just the tip of the iceberg of the existing uh, APN uh, and AB functions. <laughs> so uh, now uh, we saw APN, we saw power APN functions, we saw APN polynomials, uh, quadratic APN polynomials, this is an in, in equivalent to power functions, but what about uh, APN polynomials, this is that in equivalent to both monomials and to quadratics? Actually, we have only one example uh, found in 2008, and it is for n equal to 6. So for 15 years, it's an open problem. No more examples were found. We have no infinite families of such functions. And moreover, when it comes to AB functions, we don't even have examples of such functions. So this is uh, also a big uh, open problem. And currently, the classification of uh, APN functions is over for n at most 5. Uh, for the case of CCZ equivalence, they are only power functions. And for EA equivalence, they are power functions. And the ones which can be constructed by CCZ equivalence uh, from them, and they are done in 2000. So I will skip some slides because I see that I'm getting uh, short of the uh, time. So now I will speak about the properties of uh, APN uh, functions, uh, concentrating a bit on uh, the case of uh, monomials. So one of the properties is uh, being exceptional APN. So a function f is called exceptional APN if it is APN over f2 to n for infinitely many um, values of n. Gold and Cassani functions are the only known uh, exceptional APN functions, and it was conjectured that they are no more exceptional APN uh, functions at all. At, this conjecture was done in 2010. However, for the particular case of uh, power functions, this conjecture was open since 1995, and uh, for power functions, it was uh, proven positively that indeed such uh, power functions don't exist except Gold and Kasami function. And for the case of polynomials, the conjecture is still open. Also, there are several uh, works, uh, many works done on that topic and several results achieved, partial results. Another property is the nonlinearity of um, uh, APN functions. So all known APN families except inverse and Dobertin function have Gold-like uh, Welsh spectrum. That is they are either almost bent when n is odd or when n is even, they have five-valued Welsh spectrum. And uh, the inverse, uh, the Welsh spectrum of inverse function is known uh, since 1990. And there are also sporadic examples of uh, APN functions with non-gold-like Welsh spectrum. So they have uh, seven values. And this is known only for n equals six and seven. And the open problem is to find infinite families of quadratic APN polynomials with non-gold-like uh, nonlinearity. And the only family of APN power functions with a known Welsh spectrum is Dobertin function. And uh, the only thing what was uh, known until recently is some divisibility properties on the coefficients, which uh, implied that the function is not almost bent, and this uh, gets back to 2000. And only in two one uh, last year, we, uh, together with uh, Claude um, Calderini, Davidova, and Kaliski, we conjectured how uh, the Welsh spectrum of this function can look. So it's uh, given here, and in particular, um, the nonlinearity non uh, of this function can be described by this number. And we tried to attack this problem in the following way. We um, used the approach by uh, Dobertin when studying the Welsh spectrum of Kasami function, so this is Kasami exponent, he used uh, that it can be represented as a fraction of uh, two integers of uh, binary weight two. And then we try to do the same for all remaining uh, APN uh, functions and uh, derive some optimal representation that is as fractions uh, where a nominator and denominator have uh, uh, as small weight as possible. 
So in particular, uh, for Niho functions, we got this uh, description. And for Dobertin function, we got uh, that it's equal to the fraction of two integers, one of weight three and the other of weight two. So this is really nice for because <laughs> the uh, weight of the exponent itself is uh, m plus three, so which is quite high. However, we couldn't finish uh, the proof, so the uh, conjecture is still open and still uh, this problem needs to be solved. And then uh, I will finish my talk with um, uh, talking about the Dobertin conjecture about non-existence of new APN uh, power functions. So we tried to attack this problem uh, with Claude, Calderini, Davidova, and Kalitsky, and we considered the following construction. So take a power function x to the power s, compose with linear function, and then compose with another power function, x to the power t, and check it for APN properties. So what we did, we concentrated on the exponents s and t being APN, and uh, considering L uh, with coefficients in F2, okay? And uh, when we did it up to n to equal to nine, the cases we could find, and actually these cases are uh, proven for all n, that if you take the first um, exponent being gold and the second exponent being the inverse of this gold, then the resulting function is Kasami function. So practically you use two gold function and you get Kasami function plus some linear function. And what happens if you take gold function and for the second exponent you take inverse of another gold function then surprise, you get a function which is EE equivalent to Kasami inverse. So in the first case, we get Kasami function. In the second case, we get inverse of Kasami function. And if in the first example, we just switch the places of uh, um, the inverse of gold and the gold and take a slightly different L, then the resulting function is a fine equivalent to the inverse of gold. So, quite a few interesting things happen. So we think that this uh, construction can be potentially good for constructing APN monomials, but also APN functions of algebraic degree different from uh, quadratics. So, and um, I have to say that we didn't do... Huh? Okay. What is gone? Ah, oh, okay, I didn't notice. Okay, um, and then, so this is one approach for solving Dobertin conjecture. Another approach is to narrow down the search to uh, special type of exponents. For example, we considered uh, exponents of uh, this form and why we uh, did it, because for m equal one and k equal five, it gives um, uh, inverse and Dobertin exponents, and these are the only APN monomials which are not uh, uh, almost bent for n odd. And we proved that in general, these uh, exponents cannot gi give a b function, and for some uh, k, uh, general case, uh, this uh, is not APN. But what is really interesting that even if the function is not APN, for small parameters, they uh, have some APN-like properties, like uh, the equations we are interested in to have zero or two solutions. This property holds for most of the cases, except some uh, exceptions where the, uh, the number of solutions gets really high. So, but still we can see that there is a connection. And uh, so it, but when we took uh, k equal to six and, and seven and small m, then uh, the functions, uh, when we studied it computationally, started to behave more randomly. So we don't know what happens really when we take uh, large uh, M and K, and this is still to be studied. So this is another way to approach the Dobertin conjecture by uh, studying special type of exponents. And the last approach I will mention is uh, by finding new properties for APN uh, uh, mono uh, monomials. And this was done in re recently in the work by uh, Claude and Stepan Pisik. So a subset uh, of uh, F2 to N is called a Seedon set if it doesn't contain four different elements whose sum is zero. And it's well known that uh, the graphs of APN functions are almost always Seedon sets. Uh, and if we also define um, a sum-free set S uh, of F2 to N as uh, 
uh, the set where there exists no three elements A, B, C, such that uh, A plus B is equal to C. Then it was proven that a power function x to d is APN over f2 to n. <coughs> if it's APN, then for any j from in the n interval from 0 to n minus 1, the set of non-zero elements whose power d minus 2 to j is equal to 1 is a Seedon sum free set. And then in this slide, I bring uh, information, uh, what we know about the exhaustive sort search uh, for um, APN and AB functions. So practically, Dobertin conjecture was uh, done in 2000 based on the uh, fact that up to N26, there are no other APN power functions. And then in 2008, it was proven uh, yeah, that for N up to 33, there are no new AB monomials. And uh, then the uh, result was uh, pushed further for APN functions for n up to 33 and n equals 36, 38, 40, and 42 by adding. So adding new properties for Seedon and sum free sets actually narrows down the search for APN exponents, but not enough to exclude more cases. So this is uh, the latest data. And I will finish my talk by reminding the open, big open problems on APN monomials. So if D is Kasani, Welsh, Niho, and Dobertin exponent, does CCZ equivalence coincide with EAI equivalence for X to the power D? Finding permutations of the form X to the power D plus L of X, where L is a linear function different from zero. So Solving this for n even, you solve the big APN problem and become very famous. Finding Welsh spectrum for Dobertin function. And finally, uh, the Dobertin conjecture, finding new APN monomials. It can be done by using one of the approaches I uh, presented here because they are not finished, or using some other method. So this is uh, all what uh, I wanted to talk about. So thank you for your attention.